In this lecture, we're going to learn about exponential functions. So remember, an exponent is the power on another number. For example, two raised to the four would be an exponential function. The number at the bottom, which is being raised to another number, is called the base, and the power which the base is raised to is called the exponent. And by definition, the exponent basically means take the base and multiply it by itself that many times. So, for example, we have two to the fourth. That's the same thing as multiplying two times two times two times two. So multiplying two by itself four times. So we should be able to evaluate exponential expressions using a calculator. Let's look at an example of this. We want to evaluate five raised to the 1.7 power 5 raised to the 1.73 power, and 5 raised to the 1.732 power. We're going to do each of these by using a calculator. So typically you put in your base first, so we would type in 5, and then you would push whichever key does your exponent. Usually this is a key that says x raised to the y power, or the caret key, uh, shift 6 on a typical keyboard. And so we would type in 5 raised to the 1.7, and when we press enter or evaluate it, we get 15.426, rounding the answer off. If we evaluate 5 to the 1.73, we get 16.189, and 5 raised to the 1.732 gives us 16.241. We also should review some of the laws or properties of exponents. So if s, t, a, and b are all real numbers, with a and b both positive numbers, then the following rules will hold. a to the s times a to the t equals a to the s plus t. So if you multiply two exponential functions that have the same base, you can put them together by adding the exponents. a to the s raised to the t power is equal to a to the s times t. So raising an exponent to another exponent, you can combine by multiplying the exponents a times b raised to the s power is equal to a to the s times b to the s. So basically this says we can distribute the s throughout the product a, b. Note this only works for multiplication and division. We cannot simply distribute the power if it's addition or subtraction. 1 to the s equals 1, so 1 raised to any power is just going to be 1. a to the minus s power equals 1 over a to the s. So a negative in your exponent changes the, moves your exponential function to the denominator. And a to the zero equals one. So anything raised to the zero power will give us one. So before we go any further, let's talk about a couple of definitions. First, an exponential function is a function of the form f of x equals a raised to the x power, where a is greater than zero, and a does not equal 1. The domain of an exponential function is all real numbers. Second, we have a special type of exponential function called the natural exponential function, and it's the function of the form f of x equals e to the x, where the number e, which is the base, is defined as 1 plus 1 over n raised to the n power as n gets really big. e can be approximated to be 2.718281827 and the decimal just keeps repeating or keeps going on. So let's use some of what we've talked about to discuss graphing exponential functions. The most basic way to graph or identify the graph of an exponential function is to plot points. So for example, we want to consider the function f of x equals negative 0.25 raised to the x plus 4. We're going to sketch the graph of this by plotting points, so we're going to pick some random values for x and then evaluate what the corresponding function value would be. So let's start with x equals 0. If x equals 0, we plug 0 into our function, so f of 0 equals negative 0 0.25 raised to the 0 power plus 4, which we can plug into our calculator or just evaluate, that's going to give us a positive 3. Next we'll look with x equals 1. So f of 1 equals negative 0.25 to the 1 power plus 4, which evaluates to be 3.75. x equals 2 gives us f of 2 equals negative 0.25 squared plus 4, 
which evaluates to 3.9375. If x equals negative 1, we have f of negative 1 equals negative 0 0.25 to the negative 1 power plus 4, which evaluates to give us 0. And finally, if x equals negative 2, we have f of negative 2 equals negative 0 0.25 to the negative 2 power plus 4, which evaluates to give us negative 12. So we've picked five x values and found their corresponding y values. Let's plot those points. So if we plot the points that we found, it looks something like this. And to sketch the graph, we're just going to connect the dots. And so the graph of the function f of x equals negative 0.25 to the x power plus 4 looks something like this. Let's look at another example. This time we have y equals e to the negative x plus 1. Take a couple minutes and see if you can sketch this graph by plotting points. So again, to plot with points, we're going to choose some random values of x. We'll start with x equals negative 2. If we plug negative 2 into the function, we get y equals e to the negative negative 2 plus 1, which evaluates to be 20.0855. If we let x equal negative 1, we have y equals e to the negative, negative 1 plus 1, which simplifies to be e squared, which is 7.389. If we let x equal 0, we get y equals e to the 0 plus 1, which simplifies to be e to the 1, and that's 2.718. When x equals 1, we get y equals e to the minus 1 plus 1, which gives us e to the 0, which is just 1. And finally, if we take x equals 2, we get y equals e to the negative 2 plus 1, which simplifies to be e to the minus 1, which gives us 0.3678. So now that we've found several points, we found the x values and their corresponding y values, we can plot those on a graph as follows. So these are the points that we found. And so to sketch the graph, we're just going to connect the dots. And we see that the graph of the function y equals e to the minus x plus 1 looks something like this. And the last thing we want to talk about in this section is how to solve exponential equations. So note, if a to the u is equal to a to the v, then the exponents u and v have to be the same. So the first strategy that we're going to use to solve exponential equations is to use the properties of exponents that we talked about earlier in the lecture to write both sides of the equation with the same base, if that's possible. So let's look at an example. We have 5 raised to the x plus 3 equals 1 over 5. So we want to start by trying to rewrite this equation so that both sides have the same base. We want to try to write both sides of the equation with a base of 5. So we need to rewrite 1 over 5 so that it has a base of 5. So using the reciprocal property, or the property of negative exponents, we could rewrite the right-hand side as 5 to the negative 1. So we have 5 to the x plus 3 equals 5 to the negative 1 power. And now since both sides have the same base, we can just set the exponents equal to each other. So if 5 to the x plus 3 equals 5 to the negative 1, then x plus 3 must equal negative 1. And we can solve this equation for x. We'll subtract 3 from both sides of the equation to get x by itself. And we wind up with x equals negative 4. So we could take this x equals negative 4 and plug it into the equation to check it, just to make sure that our answer is right. Let's look at another example. This time we have 4 raised to the x squared power equals 2 raised to the x. Again, we want to rewrite this so that both sides of the equation have the same base. So we want to see if we can take the larger number, the 4, and rewrite it in terms of 2. So we should know that 4 is the same thing as 2 squared. So we can rewrite this as 2 squared raised to the x squared power equals 2x. We can use the property that says an exponent raised to an exponent can be combined by multiplying the exponents. So this gives us 2 raised to the 2x squared equals 2 to the x. And again, since we have the same base on both sides, we can now set the, the exponents equal to each other. So 2x squared must equal x. And now we can solve this. To solve the quadratic, we'll put all terms on the same side of the equation. So we subtract x from both sides to give us 2x squared minus x equals 0. 
we can factor an x out of both terms, giving us x times 2x minus 1 equals 0. And then we can use the zero product property that says that one of these two factors has to equal 0, so x equals 0, or 2x minus 1 equals 0. And then we solve for both. So if x equals 0, then we're done. x equals 0. If 2x minus 1 equals 0, we need to solve for x. So add 1 to both sides of the equation, giving us 2x equals 1. And then to get x by itself, we'll divide both sides by 2, giving us x equals 1 half. So the solution to this equation is x equals 0 or x equals 1 half. Here's another example. e to the 3x equals e to the 2 minus x. Take a few minutes and try to work through this yourself. Once you have an answer, or you want to go through it with me, go ahead and continue the lecture. So for this example, the bases are already the same. We already have a base of e on both sides. So we can just set the exponents equal to each other. This gives us 3x equals 2 minus x. Now we can solve this for x. We'll add x to both sides of the equation, giving us 4x equals 2. Then we'll divide both sides of the equation by 4, giving us x equals 1 half. Here's a slightly trickier example. We have e to the x squared equals e to the 5x times 1 over e to the 6. Again, the first thing we want to do is combine things and rewrite them so that both sides of the equation have the same base. So first, let's rewrite everything with a base of e. So we can use the reciprocal property or the negative exponent property to rewrite 1 over e to the 6. So our problem becomes e to the x squared equals e to the 5x times e to the negative 6. Now we need to combine the right hand side so that there's only one e. So remember, when you have multiplication of two exponents that have the same base, we can add the exponents together. So that'll give us e to the x squared equals e to the 5x minus 6. Now, both sides of the equation have the same base of e, so we can set the exponents equal to each other. This gives us x squared equals 5x minus 6, and we can solve this quadratic equation. First, we want to get everything on the same side of the equation, so we'll subtract 5x and we'll add 6, giving us x squared minus 5x plus 6 equals 0. This one's fairly simple to factor out, so we can factor it to be x minus 2 times x minus 3 equals 0. We use the zero product property to split it up and solve each factor, which will give us x equals 2 or x equals 3. Here's one final example. If 7 to the minus x is equal to 4, what does 7 to the 3x equal? So if we're looking for 7 to the 3x, we're going to start by trying to rewrite it in terms of 7 to the minus x, which is something that we already know. And so we can do that. 7 to the 3x equals 7 to the minus x times minus 3. So we can use one of the properties of exponents to rewrite that. We know that if we have a product in the exponent, we can t take that and write it as one of them raised to the other power. So this gives us 7 to the minus x raised to the negative 3 power. And since we know what 7 to the minus x is, we can just plug that in. That gives us 4 to the negative 3. The negative sign tells us to move our entire exponential expression into the denominator. So we have 1 over 4 cubed. And if we evaluate that, it gives us 1 over 64. So 7 to the 3x is equal to 1 over 64.